Hey everybody, welcome. I just realized I forgot to plug in my twinkly lights and life is just better with twinkly lights, so I'm going to do it. Um, little, little joy twinkles. I won't make them sparkle though because that's maybe distracting. There. Oh, everything's better. Be nice to be able to, I could probably wear some twinkle lights. Little battery pack. Hmm. Nah. So welcome. Hi, uh, my name's Jill, and thanks for dropping in to share practice with us. And uh, sweet to be with people here on the Zoom, uh, in the Zoom room, meditating and practicing and uh, uh, untethering our hearts together. So I'm inspired tonight by... Uh, a particular line that has uh, hopefully I'm filling this out to some extent tonight, but uh, uh, it's something I read this week in um, Matthew Ricard's book on happiness, which um, we've been practicing with and reading and studying in another group. And in this um, Matthew Ricard, um, quotes um, a teacher named Swami Prajnanpad. He's also re um, sometimes re referred to as Prajnanapad. So I don't know, there's a seems to be the same person, but there's an extra A sometimes. So I don't know that uh, teacher. He's, um, I think he's passed now, but uh, this was a quote that really. I landed with me as um, something that I need to pay attention to. Uh, it's about giving conditional love. And uh, I don't generally think that I give conditional love, but um, I do. <laughs> so here's the quote. He says, when you love someone, you cannot expect, in, in the quote, he says him, but them, uh, you cannot expect them to do as you please. That would be tantamount to loving yourself. Uh, uh, the way that was worded just was like, oh, because, of course, we part of our practice is loving ourselves <laughs> and self-care and um, uh, loving uh, unconditional love for ourselves is part of our practice. Um, but but I think what he's pointing to in in this quote is more of an egoic love. That if I'm offering love to someone else with the conditions of how I want them, what I want them to do, how I want them to treat me, how I want them to behave, that's just kind of holding a, a mirror up in 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 their place and saying you know this is just what I I want and um it's really just an egoic kind of love uh and I, as I've been reflecting on this I it feels really liberating because as um, many of us, I am endeavoring to uh, be less self-absorbed, be less, oh, I love this dog so much, um, <laughs> um, to be less uh, self-centered. And so, um, so that quote really was like, oh, wow, I hadn't really... May, how could I have not, but hadn't really heard this connection in that way that when I put conditions on how, um, on my love that I'm um, giving or receiving, when I'm making it conditional, it's just reinforcing me-ness, me-ness, self-ness. Um, and, and, Matthew Ricard in his book on happiness uh, says 
that self-absorption with its inseparable posse of fear and hope, so good, attraction and rejection, is the foremost enemy of inner peace. I will say that again. Self-absorption with its inseparable posse of fear and hope, attraction and rejection, is the foremost enemy of inner peace. That's a strong statement, right? The foremost enemy of inner peace. We're here endeavoring to cultivate inner peace and wisdom for our sake and for the care and sake of each other and all beings, ultimately. Um, and so, you know, there's a difference between self-compassion, self-care, and self-absorption, where... Um, I'm just looking to reinforce and um, have things how I want them to be. So this points us to an important part of our practice, altruistic love or unconditional love. And altruism means the selfless concern for the well-being of others. Unselfish. So this is the kind of love, benevolence, uh, care that we really want to cultivate is unconditional, altruistic. Um, oh, it's a, it's a, yeah, okay. Um, and uh, there's another teacher, I'll put a link to him down below in the recording here. Um, and it's in the chat here in the Zoom room, uh, Lama Rod Owens. Um, he, he's a Black Buddhist Southern, why am I saying he? They, pardon me, Lama Rod, they're um, Black Buddhist Southern Queen. I'm saying they because I'm not sure what their pronouns are. Um, they're a Dharma teacher and author a new book called The New Saints, From Broken Hearts to Spiritual Warriors. They also wrote Love and Rage, The Path of Liberation Through Anger, and Radical Dharma. They were one of the co-authors of a book called Radical Dharma, um, talking about love, race, and liberation. So um, they're wonderful teachers of liberation and um, fierce dharma, I would say. So Lama Rod had, um, I had saved this some time ago. Uh, they had posted this as a Valentine's post some time ago about uh, love and unconditional love, conditional love, these being opposites. And uh, Lama Rod says this, conditional love, this is a very strong statement again, conditional love is perhaps one of the most violent expressions of emotional abuse because we are groomed to suit the insecurities of others while losing connection to our deepest needs and joys. So here he's talking about being on the receiving. He, they are talking about being on the receiving end of conditional love and how that's a form of... Um, what they're calling violent expression of emotional abuse because we're being groomed to try to, you know, meet the conditions that are being asked of us um, to mm, tailor ourselves to the insecurities of others uh, at the cost of our own deepest wisdom and joy and care of self. Um, and I love that Lama Rod is always, or uh, when I've heard them teach, um, really keeping it real big time. And they say it like this, love doesn't mean I have to like anyone. It doesn't mean that I'm not pissed with people or that I don't find them dangerous. <laughs> Great. Naming those truths. But it means that I want everyone to be safe, to be happy, and resourced. What a beautiful 
word resource that's I love that resource knowing that the times people are out of control often means that they're reacting to the tension of feeling unsafe unhappy or under resourced so there's they're pointing out this truth that it doesn't mean that we have to like everybody or how they're behaving or that we don't need to um have some boundaries around folks that can be dangerous and harmful to us that's not what unconditional love means like i'm just going to let everybody uh be harmful um but it's this uh deeper all pervasive all encompassing boundless deep uh, aspiration that all beings be safe um no true happiness and be happy and be resourced i've never really heard being resourced uh, included in um a definition of metta or karuna so loving kindness and compassion but it it just makes so much sense is so beautiful and important Yeah, to be resourced, to be safe, to be protected, to have the conditions of care in your life, to have um, the requisites, as they're called, of of well-being. Really lovely. And uh, Lama Rod goes on to include how important self-care is in this regard of um altruistic love and care including ourselves um they say caring for myself means that i understand that if i am under resourced i cannot help to resource others right it's like we have to fill our well in order to be able to offer care to others <clears throat> And if I'm under-resourced while trying to help others, I end up draining resources from others without their consent. Wow. So <laughs> to see how self-care is includes care for others, because if I'm under-resourced and I haven't been... Mm, paying tender attention and nurturing myself with rest and food and safety, all these resourcing, then um, it's going to be harmful to others, depleting others, draining resources from others without their consent. Lastly, they say, I am finally learning how to care for myself as much of, as I have cared for others. If you do this, it will make you look selfish because everyone has gotten used to you always centering them over yourself. The drama reveals that most of the people in our lives have used our care to bypass developing real care for themselves. Um, yeah, so it can um, we can receive kind of a... <laughs> what's backlash or it's a strong word but uh reaction uh when we say no when we rest when we practice resourcing and self-care uh if people are used to um receiving a lot from us then uh it can be deemed as being selfish so just to uh be aware of that and do it anyways. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's a, there's lots of little gems in here to to reflect on that I've been finding helpful, and I hope there's something here for you around uh, hmm, the difference between self absorption and self care. That love is the 
intention and aspiration, this unconditional love, and care is the is the actions. Care is the how love is put into action. Uh, and that whether we we tend to give um, conditionally is something to reflect on you know is it is it based on is is this uh, deeper wider boundless care and um love very conditional and does it need to be there's a difference between having boundaries and really cultivating this real uh aspiration that we we want all beings to be safe happy and resourced including ourselves <laughs> um yeah So mostly um, there, there may be something here that touches a chord for you to reflect on if there's, if um, whether it's a feeling that, uh, that it's being asked of you in a conditional way that, you know, um, or if you notice that you're giving in a conditional way, check that out. And um but mostly we want to practice this <laughs> because uh, doing this in an intentional, communal way as a meditative practice um, creates the culture, creates the ground for it to um, show up in our lives. And uh, just when I've been remembering this over these um, last few days, uh, just kind of dropping in the reminder of whatever word lands for you, unconditional love or altruistic love. It, I just notice it physically in my body, it just changes how I'm moving through my day. Slows me down kind of on an inner micro level. Uh, softens me, opens my attention into a more spacious sensation, felt experience. Um, so whatever part, if there's anything that lands for you, just let it drop in through the day as you're moving through your day and do it as a formal practice as we're going to do in a few minutes. Of course, that's the way that we really mm, bring the water to the to a boil in the formal practice that we then try to keep simmering through the day, keep dropping it in and waking up over and over and over again through the day. Mm. Okay, so we're going to uh, practice now uh, to really... Um, cultivate this um, boundless, altruistic love and compassion. So adjust uh, your posture and your space. You might like to adjust your lighting. Make sure your temperature is comfortable. Get a blanket or a shawl if you need. Um, any uh, cushions or supports, or you might like to practice laying down. And uh, some of you will recognize the form of this practice as metta bhavana, but it's also it's it's love and compassion together. And we're not going to be necessarily, unless you find it really helpful, using phrases as we um, traditionally might in this practice. Um, it's just a little more organic, and then um, we'll see how it goes for you. 
Okay, so hopefully you've gotten the uh, supports that you need. See if you need any movements or touch or some deeper breaths just to slow down, settle down, arrive with yourself. Setting aside other distractions and uh, busyness so that we can bring all of our care and attention to cultivating these wise qualities. As the body comes to stillness, you can rest the eyes closed or downward. The hungry eyes that like to delight and receive, just coming to rest. Busy hands coming to rest. And just taking our time to just begin resting our energy, body, mind, softening any tension that isn't needed right now. So that the face feels inwardly peaceful. So that the shoulders rest and drop down. Inviting some caring attention and some softening to the areas of the heart center and the belly center. If it's helpful to Place a hand on these places. You're welcome to do that, of course. So as we slow down and drop down, we begin to feel more sensations of the ground and the body resting with the ground. And as it um, can be easier for most of us to access this kind of caring attention with someone we already feel some heart connection with, you can invite into awareness um, any, any being that is dear to you. It can be someone that's passed, it could be an animal companion, it could be a, a benefactor, a teacher, a mentor, it could be friends, loved ones. And if different uh, beings are coming to mind, just let them arrive in awareness, whatever comes up. And 
And then as much as possible in the body, begin to emanate, radiate, cultivate the felt experience of well-wishing as you reflect on and invite in dear ones. Wanting them to be safe, happy, and resourced. What does this feel like in the body? To let all of your awareness Really feel pervaded, all pervading love and compassion. Compassion for any suffering they may be experienced and deep benevolent well wishes. And just let that fill your heart, mind, body for these next few minutes together. Before we move on, And if it's helpful for you to use phrases, of course, you can just let that fill awareness. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be resourced. Checking in, feeling the embodied sensation of this, this well-wishing. And as you feel to whatever degree any sensation in the body of well-wishing, now let this really be offered to yourself. Understanding that caring for myself comes from the understanding that if I'm under-resourced, I can't help others. May I be safe, may I be happy, may I be resourced.
Notice if it's harder to stay present with this self-care. And just gently begin again. What does this feel like as a felt experience in the body? What sensations are here for you? Is it hard to stay connected? When offering care to self, Now gently opening our attention and intention to include a felt experience of each other that are here practicing together, people that you may not know or have strong feelings toward or against might extend into um, people that live near you, to your community. There may be neighbors that you've never met or that you just see in passing, people in your community. These are kind of considered to be neutral people that we're not so aware of usually. And understanding that all beings want to be free from suffering. All these beings also want to be happy and cared for. So just let awareness get larger, larger than self, larger than the body, filling into the space around you. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be resourced. What is the felt experience of this aspiration, this intention, as if we let it be wider and including people we don't usually attend to or care for. And just rest in this intention or use phrases if that's helpful for you. Is it harder to stay connected with this when it's neutral people? If it is, just gently begin again.
unconditional. Back in with the body and the felt experience. And now from the place of understanding that even people we have Conflict, disagreements, discomfort with, um, as Lamarad says, um, knowing that the times people are out of control often means they are reacting to the tension of feeling unsafe, unhappy, or under resourced. And so allow to gently include in awareness, awake awareness, spacious, beings that there feels some difficulty, unresolved. And as much as possible, gently begin to include the cultivation, the aspiration, May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be resourced. And you can just trust whatever comes into awareness, whoever, maybe groups of beings or different people might uh, arise. And just let that be, don't struggle with it, just trust what comes. As much as possible, letting go of our conditions. We can still have boundaries. But touching into this deeper, wider, boundless, altruistic compassion. Understanding that difficult people are suffering. Back in with the felt experience in your body. Notice if any tension has arisen. Soften, include self-care. And then for these last few minutes of the practice, to whatever degree it's possible, we want to now generate, cultivate an all-pervading sense of benevolence where love and compassion permeate the entire mind, permeate every cell of our being and beyond. Let love and compassion, unconditional, be without limit and without exclusions. May all beings everywhere be safe.
May all beings everywhere be happy. May all beings everywhere be resourced. Other stories and thoughts and wanderings of the mind are arising. Just let them pass by and continue to fill your awareness. Fill, let awareness fill heart, body, mind. All pervading benevolence altruistic compassion and love, free of self-absorption and conditions. May all beings everywhere give and receive unconditional love and care. May all beings everywhere be safe, happy, and resourced. Thank you for your practice. I'll put some of these quotes and the link to um, Lama Rod, Rod Owen's um, site. And, um, uh, and uh, some of these other quotes and also uh, a link to our upcoming New Year retreat. Um, there's a few spaces left to join if you're able and hope to practice with you again. Thanks for joining us.